The Story Arc of the Odyssey by April Vihilidal, 2021. The Story Arc of the Odyssey, architecturally crafted like a rainbow. Homer cleverly creates the beggar character that fights with Odysseus. The beggar's name is Arnus or Iris. Arnus is called Iris presumably because like Iris, the messenger of the gods, he runs errands for the suitors. Iris, the beggar, in Ithaca sees Odysseus disguised as a beggar encroaching on his territory, so he becomes aggressive and begins to insult him. The two end up in a physical altercation. The message from Iris is that Homer uses the metaphor of the eclipse, running parallel or in concentric arcs of the main storyline of Odysseus seeking revenge on the suitors, with the idea that Odysseus's higher sun god-like self is eclipsed by his moon animal lower self. The metaphor of the rainbow in the story of the Odyssey. We see here Odysseus fighting with Iris. Odysseus is disguised as a beggar fighting with the real beggar, Iris. And then we see Iris, the goddess of the rainbow. Arnus or Iris was the beggar due to his willingness to run messages for the suitors of Penelope. Also, Iris, the divine rainbow messenger, he was a beggar in Ithaca who sees Odysseus disguised as a beggar encroaching on his territory, so he becomes aggressive and begins to insult him. They go back and forth threatening each other until Antinous notices the confrontation and explains that watching the two beggars square off would be entertaining. Antinous says that the winner of the fight will be given food and would be permitted to dine with the suitors. The rest of the suitors crowded around the two beggars, and they prepared to fight. Odysseus removed his rags and tied them around his waist, revealing a surprisingly muscular body, because Athena was standing close by, making him appear bigger and stronger than he was. When Iris saw this, he was intimidated, but the suitors pushed him towards Odysseus. Odysseus entertained the idea of killing Iris, but then decided he should just knock him out so the suitors would not suspect anything. Iris aimed a punch at Odysseus, but before he could do anything, Odysseus hit him below the ear, crushing his jawbone. Iris crumbled, and Odysseus dragged him outside the hall, leaned him up against the courtyard wall, and told him to sit there and scare off the pigs and the dogs. He also threatened that if Iris did not stop pushing around the other beggars, things would get worse. Iris's appearance within the epic develops the Homeric themes of punishing the inhospitable and appearances versus reality. Iris, the Greek, rainbow goddess. Iris, in Greek mythology, the personification of the rainbow, in Homer's Iliad, for example, a messenger of the gods. According to the Greek poet Hesiod, she was the daughter of Thamos and the ocean nymph Electra. In Hesiod's works, at least, she had the additional duty of carrying water from the river Styx in an ewer whenever the gods had to take a solemn oath. The water would render unconscious for one year any god or goddess who lied. In art, Iris was normally portrayed with wings, and her attributes were the herald's staff and a vase. She was shown serving wine to the gods or escorting them to the wedding of Peleus and Thetis. 
Therefore, we can understand because of the messenger idea why Homer named Iris, Iris. The story arc of the Odyssey, architecturally crafted like a rainbow, the metaphor in the arc of red is that which is a physical reality of survival. Homer crafts the story arc so that the patriarchal line of males to male, father to son, is more important than the husband and wife relationship. In the patriarchal lineage, it is of the utmost importance for the male to pass on to his male son all that he has plundered, amassed, and the fame awarded for gaining by force and appropriation what is now called being owned by the male line of heirs of property. The story arc of the Odyssey, architecturally crafted like a rainbow, the metaphor in the arc of orange, as in the sexual reproductive aspects of the species and its continuance. Homer crafts the story arc so that it is made known that there is male dominance of the opposite sex to the extreme of ownership. He owns his wife Penelope as he can be sexually disloyal where she, as his property, cannot be sexually disloyal. His property his 12 sexually dishonorable female slaves are ordered by Odysseus to his son Temeculus to hang the bitches as they are mere animals in the eyes of the father for their disloyalty thus passing down the belief and the practice of ownership of the opposite sex as being accepted and necessary for kingship in the patriarchal lineage. The story arc of the Odyssey, architecturally crafted like a rainbow, the metaphor in the arc of yellow, as in the power one holds over others to maintain survival at its most pleasurable level with disregard for others and placing oneself above all. Homer crafts the story arc so that it is made known that Odysseus is numero uno with extreme power over the lives of others. Odysseus first kills Antinous by shooting an arrow at him while he appears to be drinking from a cup. The butt shaft of the arrow is sticking out of his neck when all is said and done. This is the man who was most after his wife and sort of was the ringleader of the men vying for Penelope's hand in marriage. Eurymachus argues this very point. Antinous being the ringleader, and argues that the men will pay back all they have taken and then some. Odysseus doesn't even consider the offer and proceeds to take out all of the men until they are all dead. The story arc of the Odyssey, architecturally crafted like a rainbow, the metaphor in the arc of green as the bridge from the animal survival instincts to the humane aspects of seeing others as mirrored reflections of oneself. In Ithaca, Odysseus goes to the farm of Laertes. He enters his father's home and at first doesn't reveal himself, but after Laertes cries at the memories of Odysseus, Odysseus then reveals himself to him and they hug. Odysseus tells him how he hit revenge on the suitors. They eat together at lunch. In the city, the rumors are spreading of the deaths of the suitors. The parents of the suitors hold an assembly. Others think they got what they deserve, but the parents beg to differ. They track Odysseus to Laertes' house. Just then, Athena puts a stop to them disguised as mentor. She kills Antinous' father. All inhabitants of Ithaca forget the bloodbath that happened that day. For Athena wipes their memories. The story ends there with peace back in Ithaca. 
By saving Odysseus's reunion with Laertes until the last, the Odyssey suggests that no relationship, not even the relationship of husband and wife, is more important than the bond between father and son. The Odyssey takes place in a patriarchal world where the best thing a man can do is pass his fame as a warrior and the wealth he has plundered on to his male heir. This patriarchal warrior, warrior code originally drove Odysseus to leave Penelope's side in order to win fame and spoils at Troy. At the same time, however, the ending undermines the patriarchal warrior code. Laertes's joy at being reunited with his son is contrasted with the rage and grief of the suitor's fathers, who have lost their own sons at Odysseus's hands. Odysseus is powerless to prevent further bloodshed. Only Athena's divine intervention brings peace to Ithaca. The story arc of the Odyssey, architecturally crafted like a rainbow, the metaphor in the arc of blue, the intellect or the observation of higher codes of ethics of humanity being humane. Homer crafts the story arc so the eclipse of April 16th 1178 BCE at 1202 PM is used as a metaphor that allows a point of questioning by the author Homer to his reader. Is the higher son Apollo stepfather aspect of Odysseus eclipsed by the lower moon Artemis huntress goddess who killed his mother aspect of Odysseus. The story arc of the Odyssey, architecturally crafted like a rainbow, the metaphor in the arc of purple, the higher consciousness, awareness of higher codes of ethics that transcend earthly existence. Homer crafts the story arc of purple and uses the gods and goddesses of Greek mythology to act as metaphors such as the stepfather of Odysseus being Apollo, the sun god, and Kione, his earthly mother, being killed because of her vanity by the competitive huntress goddess of the moon, Artemis. He also uses Athena, the goddess of shape-shifting between the opposites of the male and female extremes. It was prophesied that Athena would exceed in greatness the great god Zeus. He attempted to kill his own daughter, but Athena emerged from her mother's womb as a mature adult, and in this instance, Homer develops the character of Athena, the anima of Odysseus, as the harbinger of peace. Athena then becomes the cry of equality for womanhood beyond sexual oppression, slavery, and any type of dominance. Works cited. Works cited. Works cited. The last of works cited. Thank you for your attention.